Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can apply a shadow to any PNG image that you're going to bring into DaVinci Resolve 18. And also I'll show how when you add a shadow in this way, that the shadow will also track the movement. So if you do decide to animate your image, that the shadow should follow it around the screen as well. So I have the main video on video track 1, and then the PNG image is being brought on video track 2 that regardless of the size of the original image, that it is going to scale up to the size of your video frame. So here you can see bringing the image in right away, that it will go ahead and stretch automatically. So what you're probably going to want to do is to lower the zoom and change the position on your image. So click on the image clip once it's on your timeline, and then in the top right in the inspector you can decrease the zoom so it's not stretched across the entire screen, and then change the X and Y position. So I'll just move this into the bottom left hand corner for now. So once you have it roughly where you want it to be, let's go ahead and add a drop shadow effect onto this image. So open up the effects window on the top left edit page, go down here. So under toolbox, we have open effects and in open effects, we can search using the search bar for drop shadow. So you want to drag this effect onto the PNG image clip on the timeline. So just drag it there. And you may see a light shadow going down into the right of our box here. So that would be the standard drop shadow, but we can manipulate the effect so that the shadow can basically be anywhere and much more visible. So with the clip selected, go over to the effects tab in the inspector top right hand corner. And let's start by decreasing the blur. So this will make the actual shape of the box as the shadow come into view a lot more. And then let's increase the shadow strength from 0.5 to 1.0. So you'll notice when we do that, that the shadow is no longer transparent. And we can pull the shadow away from the box by increasing the drop distance. So the further this goes, the farther the shadow is away from the center point. And in order to make it go in a certain direction, we use the drop angle to adjust that. So by default, it goes down into the right, but we can adjust this so that the box basically goes in whichever direction we need it to go. So anywhere from negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees. So we have 360 degree control here. And if you want the shadow to be much further away from the image, then you'll run into the limitation of the slider, which you'll see the drop distance 0 0.2 is the max that you can slide to here, but we can type in a bigger number if you double click on the number field, and then type in something like 0 0.5 and hit enter. So you can see that goes much further than the maximum on the slider. Let's put 1.0 here. And so we have the shadow that is now completely separate from the original box. One of the nice things about having the shadow track the original is that if we make any more changes on the video tab, to affect the original, it's also going to affect the shadow. So if I change the Y position, the shadow tracks it across the screen. And if we increase the zoom or decrease it, then the shadow is going to increase or decrease its size in addition to that. So let's go one step further and have a simple animation with a drop shadow. So I'll bring this image of a man onto the timeline. I'm just putting him in video track three so that we can see the box shadow and this guy at the same time. So let's start by going to the start of the video clip and then position him off the screen. So I'll just change the X position until he's right about there. I'm gonna keyframe it. Let's go one second or so into the clip and move him onto the screen where we want him to end up at. So if you keyframed one point and then you change the value, it's going to automatically create the second keyframe. So now if we go to the start and hit play, then he's gonna have a simple slide onto the screen. So the nice thing is that the shadow can actually track this as well. So let's add a drop shadow to this clip. And if we hit play right now, uh, then we should be able to see the shadow down into the right. It's kind of visible there, but harder to see when there's not that much shadow strength. So let's increase the shadow strength and decrease the blur. If we want, we can leave the angle the same down into the right is your natural drop shadow position, or we can manipulate that a little bit, adjust the drop distance to wherever you like it and I'll even decrease the blur a little bit more. So if we go to the start of the clip again, and we hit play is following the man across the screen. So our shadow tracks whatever the original does, which is really convenient for us, we don't need to animate a second clip, or anything like that, as long as we modify the first, the drop shadow is going to track whatever changes we make. And lastly, if you don't want a black shadow, you can change it to any color you want. So if you click on the color where it's currently black, and let's shift it all the way towards white, 
then our shadow can be this white color if we hit OK. Then it's pretty self-explanatory. It's now a white shadow outline. We could change this to something like red even if we wanted it to be. So that in a nutshell is probably the easiest way to add a shadow to a PNG inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see you all in my future video content.